Good to see everyone here today. Um, I guess we see kind of turn this way. And, you know, um, some, someone mentioned that the church is on the tilt. Well, everybody's sitting on that side. It's okay. <laughs> Sit where you're comfortable. I know some of you have been sitting in the same uh, pew so long, you've got a groove for me. And God forbid you have to sit somewhere different. But that's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but thank you all for, for coming to worship last week. I, I hope you were blessed. I know it was a crazy uh, Sunday with changes. Uh, Gary got sick and couldn't have come, but I'm grateful for Pastor Hyde who was able to, to come. I heard that he sang in his sermon. Um, I'm glad there are pastors who have that talent and can do that. <laughs> Today we're having a luncheon after this service, so I hope you brought your appetite. And tomorrow we'll have our men's prayer breakfast at 7.30 at the Lonely Cracker Barrel. And starting this month, we're going to meet every Monday. So if you're up around 7.30 and in town, we'd love for you to join us at the Cracker Barrel. That's every Monday. Also, uh, we've got a sign-up form that will pass around during the luncheon for anyone who, who might be interested and hasn't signed up yet to help with the community table. That's coming up at the end of the month. We also have the Fall Festival. That'll be the last Saturday of the month. And we're going to have our tent set up, offering hospitality. So we're going to be welcoming people. And we'd like to give out water again, so if you are in town and see a case of water on sale, uh, I encourage you to think about buying it and bring it to the church, and we'll have water to give out as a sign of hospitality to our community. The, the festival is really growing. We've had a great turnout and response to, from vendors, so it's going to be probably the largest festival ever. We're, we're opening up down towards the church, more spots for vendors, so going to be a great, a great opportunity for us to, to welcome uh, people into our town. But today we are gathered uh, to worship and to give thanks for what God has done and what God is doing. And I hope that um, we will we'll, we'll be like the folks in the Bible who said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. But let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come together this day and worship you. We thank you for your body and presence with us and that you are present in this worship time. As we uh, prepare to worship you with song and prayers and the giving of our tithes and offerings and hearing your word read and proclaimed, we also give thanks that on this Sunday we come to your table in Holy Communion and we, we just anticipate meeting you in the broken bread and shared cup. Lord, uh, again, we thank you for all that you have done and are doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I shared these prayer concerns from our early service. Uh, Sue Bacchus asked that we remember her sister Claire C. Graves. She's having some more tests performed. Also, um, Marilyn has asked that we would pray for her daughter-in-law, Linda. She's having some surgery this Thursday. And also granddaughter Leslie, they had, had an accident while on vacation will be having some knee surgery done. My dad is recovering from knee surgery this last week and he appreciates the prayers. Our, and also let us remember uh, Sandy Morris, her father, Jack McNally, passed away on Wednesday and her and Terry are traveling. We also have many in our church who are traveling so we pray for their safety. Um, also let us remember to keep praying for the safety and security of our schools. And are there other prayer concerns we need to be aware of? Just raise your hand. Uh, yes. Uh, our friend David Dyer has been on the prayer list for the long while. He has Hodgkin's lymphoma, and they have called him hospice. So David Dyer has long been on our prayer list, so he's in hospice care. Other prayer concerns? My granddaughter Chloe is here with us today, and she is it's her birthday today. She is ten. Okay. Happy birthday, Chloe. Um, also, want to give thanks to God for uh, Gary and Janet married on Friday. So that's when the flowers are here, just in honor of their wedding. So we he's just back there grinning. <laughs> And yet, well, let us go to God in prayer this morning. Uh, gracious God, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer and that you're already aware of the needs, the burdens, even the celebrations on our hearts before we even uh, utter a word to you. And Lord, we give thanks that you are God who brings comfort to the sick and the suffering, hope to the helpless, that you bring light, even the faintest light, to the most dark situations. And Lord, we give thanks that you are with us that you have promised to be with us until the fullness of your kingdom comes from heaven to earth. Lord, we have shared many concerns for sickness. Lord, we pray that your healing presence and comfort will be with those in need. We pray for those who grieve, Lord, that the promise of, of resurrection life, life eternal with Jesus in heaven, would cover them in their sadness and loss. We pray, Lord, for our schools, that you would surround them with a hedge of protection, and we pray against uh, spirits of evil intention of harm and, and destruction we'll give thanks that um, this past week the situation was handled in a way that uh, spared any harm or hurt and Lord we pray for those who work in law enforcement our police, our firefighters, sheriffs EMTs, all who, who in many ways put their life in line for our safety and security we pray for our men and the women in the military who are separated from home and who protect our homeland, Lord. And we yearn for that day of peace among all nations. And we pray for the leaders of all nations, Lord, that you would give them godly wisdom and counsel and help them lead and legislate and rule in ways that promote not personal agendas or political prerogatives, but will bring a glimpse or a bit of the kingdom of heaven earth. And Lord, we pray um, for our church, and we give thanks, Lord, for all you are doing and, and are wanting to do through our congregation, helping us to become a, a, a stronger witness for Christ in our community. And we pray for our outreach endeavors that will be taking place this month and in the days ahead, Lord, that you would uh, bless those as true expressions of, of, of care, compassion, and concern for our community. And Lord, again, we, we thank you for um, your goodness, your grace, your, your love, and your presence in our lives in all seasons. And here is now as we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let's pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that the scriptures are read and your words proclaimed. We may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. We please stand today. We read the Luke 23, the New International Version. When the hour came, Jesus' apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the, but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed. But woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Um, I tell you, I was driving with some friends going to eat. Uh, <laughs> we were going from uh, Livonia over to Royston. And you might have seen the church side. It said, Missing church is a misdemeanor. The more you miss, the meaner you get. <laughs> so, you know, I told y'all in the past, when I'm on vacation, I normally go to church. But um, I, I did go to church last week, and I tried to go online, and it's not the same. And and I, and I said to my dad, I said, I think my whole week was off because I took a vacation from church. But it's, it is good to be here with you all, and I'm looking forward to the month ahead. And I'm really looking forward to Tuesday, September 27th, when we'll have our community table. And the community table is a free meal that I hope will help us reach out in grace and love to our neighbors, to folks who, who we might know in the supermarket, but we don't necessarily know in the church house. And I'm looking forward to, um, to that outreach. And did you know that eating a meal with others has been a community building experience from the very beginning of our human story? Before writing was invented, we have cave drawings. And the cave drawings depict people eating together and, and that was even before writing had been invented. And think of your own experience. What is something that you often do with family and friends? You eat. And we are in one of the most important eating seasons of the year, college football. <laughs> you know, the tailgating experience is almost as, as religious as the going to the game experience, is it not? Y'all come on in. Eating is a way that we build community. Eating around the table is how we share life together. Even in our homes, even with home design, kitchens and the family table are so important in the design for they are places of relationship and community building. You really know you're close to someone when you can sit at their table and really close when you can sit at their kitchen table. In church work, I have found that it's a whole lot easier to get to know people when we're sitting around a table and not pulpit in front of a row of pews. I'm glad that we eat a lot in this church. We enjoy eating together. Today we have our first Sunday luncheon, but we also have other meals throughout the months and, and our time together. And a lot of y'all in your own relationships get together to eat. And I'm glad that our supper club is starting as a way for people in the church get to know people a bit better and we have communion on a regular basis at least once a month now there's some churches where communion is once a year and I, I I'm glad that in our tradition we had it um, some churches have it every Sunday but in this church we have the, the tradition of once a month and our church really in all our eating it's not that we're hungry people or you have a fat pastor we're just continuing the tradition that goes back from the days of the Old Testament and in the days of Jesus in the New Testament. Because in the Bible, meals are so important at, in, as, as a place to share life together, to grow together in Christian community. 
and family. Over the next few weeks, I'll be preaching some sermons that come from various stories in the ministry of Jesus where people are invited to come and eat. Today's scripture lesson takes place in the upper room. Jesus and his disciples are eating together. They're celebrating the Passover. At this table, Jesus gives us a new covenant, a new promise. And Jesus also reminds us of the promise of the coming kingdom of God. So here we are in the upper room. It's the last few days, last really last few hours of Jesus' life. And the disciples have traveled down from Galilee where they had spent most of their time in ministry. And when they entered the city, it was on, on the Palm Sunday, and there was great fanfare. And Jesus has done some teaching and some meddling around the temple. And now they are in the upper room. Uh, as many people have come to Jerusalem to observe the Passover. And Jesus has the, the disciples around the table. And do you notice, did you notice that in Luke's gospel, it is mentioned, there's no doubt, that Judas is also present at this table. I think that's so important for us to remember. As we look at Jesus' table and this, this example of, of who's at the table, because that says a lot about, about your table, who's there and who isn't. But if Jesus can have a place for Judas at the table, his betrayer, his enemy, it, it tells us much about the nature of Jesus' invitation. For Jesus is offering grace to all, even Judas, if his heart will remain open. Yes, all who see their need for grace are welcome to come to Jesus' table. No one is unworthy of coming to Jesus' table except those who actually think they've earned a seat at the table. Those who feel worthy. For Jesus' table is a table with a very gracious and generous welcome. When we prepare for Holy Communion, I offer this invitation. I read it to you now. Christ our Lord invites to His table. All who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. That is the gracious invitation to come to Christ's table. And this is Christ's table. Yes, this table is in our church, but this is not the table of Livonia United Methodist Church. It is Christ's table, and it is a kingdom table. Um, however, Jesus' table is also one full of mercy and forgiveness. And that is why the invitation is followed with this invitation, this, this, this challenge. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. So that is why in Holy Communion, after we hear the invitation, we then go into a time of personal and corporate confession. Because we know that we come to Christ's table in a spirit of humble forgiveness and mercy. We come trusting in God's grace. We come trusting in the promise afforded to us in Scripture that if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. And the celebration of Holy Communion and the Great Thanksgiving calls us to remember God's mighty acts of salvation. Acts in the past, what God has done. It also encourages us to look around and see what God is doing now in our very midst, but also to look forward with hope into what God promises to do. Yes, we look back, we look around, we look forward for glimpses of the promised coming kingdom of God. In today's scripture, Jesus tells his disciples he will not eat the bread or drink the cup again until the kingdom, until he is in the kingdom. Have you ever thought about the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? I know I, I mention this quite often in, in sermons and in Bible studies. It's so important, I believe, the kingdom of God. When we hear the word kingdom, it's very quick for us to think of political things, of the realm of a king, of an empire. But the kingdom of God is not just a political reality. It is not a nation or an empire as we think of that. And sadly, when the disciples and the crowds had, had come with Jesus to Jerusalem for the Passover, on Palm Sunday when they were waving palms and shouting, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, there were a lot of, of hopes and, and 
anticipation that Jesus would be the Messiah who would establish a new kingdom. A kingdom that would be like that of Israel under the leadership of David and his son Solomon. Those are some of the nationalistic hopes of, of the people at that time. But Jesus knew that he was going to bring in a greater kingdom, the spiritual reality of the kingdom of God. Yes, the kingdom of God is really a spiritual realm. The kingdom of God is where God's holy love rules and reigns. And the kingdom of God actually encompasses everything. It's all encompassing. The economic, the political, and the social. Yes, the kingdom of God is the promised rule and reign of God's holy love over all things. And I think we find an important connection here with the Passover, Holy Communion, and the promised kingdom of God. The Passover that Jesus and the disciples were celebrating goes all the way back to the days when, of Moses, when the Jews were slaves in Egypt. And for 400 years, they cried out for help. You know, help us, Lord. Help your children. Set us free. They lived as, as slaves in Egypt. In Egypt, Pharaoh was not only the king, but also considered a deity, a god. So when Moses came asking Pharaoh to let the Jews go out into the wilderness to worship God, Pharaoh, Moses was not just challenging Pharaoh as a political leader, he was also challenging Pharaoh as a spiritual leader. Because Moses was saying, you know, the Jews want to worship the true God. And Pharaoh, that ain't you. Well, as if you remember from maybe uh, the Ten Commandments movies or Bible school, Pharaoh was not so gracious. He did not say, okay, yeah, that's fine. Y'all take a break, go out, enjoy a Labor Day weekend, go worship, come back. No, that was not the case. Pharaoh's heart was hardened for not letting the people go. And so Exodus records a series of plagues, of curses that come from the hand of God. And each of these plagues and curses are, are very interesting because they attack or they, they show that the God of Israel has power over the lesser and weaker deities and gods of Egypt. Because each of those curses is, is a way of showing that the God of Egypt really had no power. And the final plague is in the curses of the Exodus is the Passover. When the angel of death would come and pass over the land and kill in every home the firstborn male, be it a male child or even livestock. But if the home had the blood of a lamb painted over the doorpost, the angel of death would pass over that home and the firstborn child and even livestock would survive. Well, the night of the Passover, the Jews were directed to prepare a special meal Really, one maybe the first examples of, of a to-go meal, because they had to eat it at a moment's notice, dressed and ready to flee. Um, and that is why the bread they ate was unleavened. And actually, they were they were to prepare for this meal seven days in advance, when I have any yeast in their homes. All of these details are recorded in Exodus twelve, and and the Passover be, became a a yearly memorial, a yearly remembrance where the Jews would remember what God had done for them, how he had heard their cries, how he had hardened and broken the heart of Pharaoh, how he led them through the, the Dead Sea, led them through, uh, led them to the Red Sea, led them, led them to the wilderness and to the Promised Land, and that God had never for, abandoned or forsook them despite their times of unfaithfulness. And so the Passover was to be, again, this ongoing memorial for them to remember what God had done. And now when Jesus comes and offers to us the Passover, he has made a new covenant. And so we celebrate it as Holy Communion. And when we come to the communion table, we remember bits of the Passover, how God has set us free from slavery, sin, and death. But we realize that the lamb that was slain for us was not a lamb that was a, sh uh, a shepherd in a field, but was Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, who became the Lamb of God, whose blood was shed on the cross. And by his blood shed on the cross, 
he has forgiven us and set us free from slavery to sin and death. And we also remember in Holy Communion that because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, God has sent to us the Spirit. And the Spirit reminds us of our freedom and empowers us to live a godly life and to fulfill God's call and plan upon our lives until the kingdom comes. Yes, God has given us at the table an opportunity to experience, to see, to even taste, literally, uh, a glimpse of the kingdom of God and to inspire us whenever we come to the table to keep the faith, to keep looking for God's holy rule and reign to come on the last day. And I'm glad that God's table is a kingdom table, a table that encompasses all, that is greater than anything on this world that could try to divide us. And that is my vision as well for our community table. I pray our community table can be a kingdom table. I pray the community table will be a place where we can experience and share God's grace, God's love, God's mercy with others, especially people in our community who do not have a, a church home, who do not have a place where they go regularly to worship. I pray that at this community table we will have the courage to share the good news of God's grace and love and how God is working in our lives. And, and, and celebrate how God is working in our community. And I pray that a community table can become a source of hope for a world that increasingly seems to be hopeless. And I pray that around the community table, bonds of shared life and shared love will be formed that will help us truly become a beloved community here in Lebanon. And as we sit at the community table, we will cast a vision together with our neighbors for God's kingdom here in Lebanon, as we can see and experience God's rule and reign of holy love among us. So to prepare for that table, let us uh, come to God's table today in holy communion. If you have your uh, hymnal, I invite you to turn to page 12. And here again the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take a moment to offer your own prayer in the silence of your heart. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were your sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now we continue over to the great thanksgiving. That's on page 13. And, and in the great thanksgiving, again, it is a prayer that goes back to the days of the early church. And in the great thanksgiving, we are thankful for what God has done as well as what God is doing in our lives today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and make us also new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which you gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples to take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And this unleavened wafer reminds us of the body of Christ given for us. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, and remember to me. Behold the cup of salvation. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us given here this day, and all these gifts of bread and vine. May them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. So Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory to yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the Lord's table. You have heard the invitation. Today we will uh, have communion with a uh, wafer of the cup. So I will offer your wafers if you come up and cut your hand on to give you a wafer. And then a communion steward will have the tray with the cup with the grape juice. I like to serve those who will be uh, assisting first and then they will direct you all to come.
Father, we thank you for your invitation to your table. We thank you that you have fed us this means of grace and bread and cup. And we have felt the real presence of your Son among us. And we give thanks that we have spiritual food for the journey ahead as we walk together hand in hand, loving God, loving each other, and loving our neighbor until your kingdom of holy love comes from heaven to earth. Again, we thank you, Lord, for your table and your presence with us. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Please stand and join me in hymn number 130. God will take care of you.